Hey YouTube, it's been about five months now since we've installed the 12 kilowatt sound sink inverter, the three phase inverter, and also since we've installed the 26 panels. Remember, if you watch our previous videos, we started off with only about five panels and we built on the system and we, en we ended up replacing all of the panels and upgrading them all. So I thought that it would be good to give you a five month review. So let's start with what the inverter is powering right now the intention was to go almost off grid and i think we are about 95 percent there already so we off grid for electricity and or energy we off grid for water as well so this system is powering a Grundfos borehole water pump a dab italian water pump to pump the water into the dwellings and everything is on the backup except the geyser, the geyser or the water heater has a 4000 watt or a 4 kilowatt element so we decided not to put that onto the inverter and besides we are using the evacuated tube system to heat up the water in any case but on a day like this which is now almost completely cloudy these EVTs are not going to work but as long as we have electricity we can supplied by the utility we can heat up that water in order to go completely off grid and in a forthcoming video we'll show you what we've done to compensate for days like this but back to our review so we said that everything in the house except the geyser or the water heater and there's another instant water heater which is an electrical one it works on induction that is rated at 4000 watts as well uh, but in reality it only consumes about three and a half kilowatts so those two items are not on the backup side of the inverter some of the items that are on the backup side that I'll mention the dishwasher speed queen top loader two ACs or air conditioners one is a 12,000 BTU and one is an 18,000 BTU non-inverter ACs and I did test them running at the same time so that's a cool thing about the inverter the stove the electric stove which is a saran glass top stove and a an oven those are the notable heavy high energy demanding appliances that are on the backup side of the inverter let's look at some stats so it's been about five months and looking at the uh, rate the investment return rate so i'm not going to give you absolute values but i'll give you equivalent values because if I give you absolute values, it's every installation differs, right? Uh, my installation, because I procured a lot of items by myself, it's not going to cost the same as a turnkey solution, for example. So equivalent in RAND terms or in commodity terms. So far, my return has yielded the equivalent of nine panels or 45% of my inverter cost or 98% of one battery so it's either nine panels or 45% of the inverter cost or 98% of the cost of one battery and that's after five months now naturally that depends on the extent of your consumption now because I'm a high user of energy my investment return will be faster because there's less waste in terms of what this solar plant has yielded, it has yielded 7.8 megawatt hours of, el of electricity and we've realized a carbon dioxide reduction of 7,779 kilos which is about 7.8 tons of carbon dioxide 205 kilograms of sulfur dioxide reduction and we've planted the equivalent of 4.4 trees and we've saved two and a half tons of standard coal we would have otherwise consumed if we were connected to the grid for our complete energy demands okay so then moving on to the inverter itself and what i like about the inverter being a three phase inverter i'm able to maximize my energy saving because from the utility we have a three phase feed so every phase is being supplemented with energy if i'm not using that energy directly so that's a good thing about it however what i don't like about it is that the fans are pretty noisy we had a question by the way by one of our uh, viewers 
and he asked when does the fan come on so i've been observing the fan and it comes on around 10 a.m every morning and particularly when it's starting to charge the battery so at half past 10 this morning i was already generating over nine kilowatt because it was quite a sunny day at nine in the morning and the fan was already spinning so the fan is pretty noisy compared to the goodware uh, inverter that i had previously that had no fans at all so it was using heat sinks to cool itself so that is something that it can be noisy so because mine is in my garage it doesn't uh, interfere with with the house at all so i i don't really it doesn't affect me that much the next thing is when we had stage six load shedding and we had to tolerate about eight hours of no power from the grid then that put a you it put a bigger demand on the inverter so we had to watch for appliances, heavy demanding appliances that were on concurrently. So we needed to just manage that. You can't run uh, too many heavy duty appliances concurrently, especially if you're running something like an AC or an air conditioner. It did cause the inverter to trip at times. I think that uh, from, a, from, a, from a feature perspective, Everything's work uh, has been working pretty well. The one thing that I must say that I observed is that it per phase it does have a limit of about 23.5 amps per phase. So if you exceed 23.5 on any of the phases, that is going to cause an AC overload, and it will give you it will report that error on the display, the LCD display of the inverter itself. We also started off with three 5.3 kilowatt hour lithium ion phosphate batteries and about a month after we did the installation we added one more. So we have about 20 kilowatt hours of backup storage capacity and that was just to maximize the saving from this installation because what we noticed is that the batteries charge up by about half past 12 or 12 noon uh, depending on demand if demand is high during the morning then the batteries will stop charging at around 1 p.m to 1 30 p.m so after that everything else is not waste but there is some waste because we are not generating anymore at full capacity there's a there's quite a drop after the peak I'll put a chart here for you to see and that was just to minimize that that loss because we want to we want to be we want to work off grid at night for as long as possible before we switch back to the grid for, for power if you want to see the first review of the almost off grid on the sunsync 12 kilowatt uh, inverter when we just installed it watch it here 